Thanks for joining us on another Breaking Nashville. If you're not doing so already, please follow us on Twitter. It's at Breaking Nash. We've got the website. It's BreakingNashvillePodcast.com or BreakingNashvilleShow.com. Why two websites? Because we weren't planning ahead. A big artist today, a big Texas country artist today. I'm excited to talk about him and get his opinion on the way Music Row is heading. It's Aaron Watson, and this is Breaking Nashville. So tip your hat to the cowboy. Every once in a while And take time to remember that cowboy smile A little part of every heart of every rodeo fan Died there in the rain and the mud in July and shy I'm excited because we've had a lot of uh, young upstarts, the Nashville stars who are coming in here and doing break in Nashville, but we haven't had our Texas country superstar yet, and now we have Aaron Watson in studio. Hey, thank you. Aaron, I'm obsessed with um, the fact that in Texas, there's this whole country circuit where people can have a stadium with 20,000 people and sell out a place, yeah. and, and then elsewhere, people are going, who is this person? Yeah, you know, it's funny when we go new places, you know, I've... We're fixing to put out our 12th record. Yeah. And we've been doing this for like 14 years. You know, we've got a killer band, got the bus, we've got the whole nine yards, but we go somewhere new, you know, and I'm married with three kids. I'm starting to get gray hair, but we go somewhere new and they're like up and coming country singer. And I always have to, you know, correct them. Like I'm not, I'm not up and coming. I'm just slow and steady. That's right. (laughs) That's what, you know, and it, it really is. It's. It's it's such an incredible environment for music in Texas. I mean, a Texas is so big. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's ridiculous sometimes. You know, people are like, "Oh, we're just regional," and I'm like, "Yeah, well, let me just describe this region to you. From the bottom of Texas to the top takes as long as to go from the top of Texas up to Canada. So this is a. But you know, the the, the cool thing is that we built up Texas. And that's really, you know, became our uh, bread and butter. And we, we, that's, we know that that's where we can continue making a great living mm-hmm. and making our, our music. But it's, an, it's enabled us to be able to afford to franchise out to new places. Yeah. And, you know, the last five or six years, we've hit the Midwest really hard uh, and, and the West Coast. And then, you know, the, in the last year or so, year and a half, you know, I was like, we've got to start focusing on... Utah, Wyoming, Montana. I was like, these are folks that are still wearing boots and buckles. These are my kind of folks. Yeah. And and it really is. I it's just a it's a it's a you know, for me I'm very grateful for the opportunity. You know, I'm I'm a husband and a father and this is how I put food on the table. So, you know, my heart goes out to some of these these more mainstream Nashville guys because I can't tell you how many of these guys I've met that are just incredibly talented. They sing their butts off. They're great songwriters. They have hits. And then next year, they're just gone. Yeah. And that's frightening for me. And we've had opportunities to go that route several times in the last 14 years. Mm -hmm. And when you sit down at the table, you know, it just, you sometimes have to go, why are you doing this? Is it because you want to be famous or do you do this because you love music? Right. And, uh, you know, I grew up listening to Willie and Waylon and Merle and Johnny Cash, and I think those guys are legends because music is something they had to do, regardless of whether they... I have no doubt Willie Nelson, had he never became the redheaded stranger, <laughs> even right now, he would probably have like some... If he had never become famous, Willie right now at age 70-whatever... right. Would, would have some nasty van and he'd be playing some hole in the wall tonight, tomorrow night. Cause that's just music is who he is. And, and I, lo- and I love country music and, uh, you know, it goes through its different phases and stages. And the great thing about an artist is you're supposed to paint your own picture. So uh, did you write all of your, mo- your own music? You know, have you been writing your own music and you never yeah. take, you know, a lot of the times we talk to a lot of Nashville artists and they have a catalog and they listen to songs and they go, oh, that song speaks to me in a certain way. Yeah. You know, like with this last record, our, our record that we put out two years ago is called Real Good Time. And we sold enough copies nationwide to chart it at number nine on the country billboard chart. Yeah. 
And as our as our fan base continues to grow, I also want to I want my music to continue to grow and to get better. I mean, in anything you do in life, you should continue to strive to be the best you can be. Right. So we decided I wanted to find a producer uh, that 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 understood what I what I do, and uh, we decided to work with Keith Stegall. And Keith has produced all the Alan Jackson records, Zach Brown records, George Jones, Randy Travis. He's probably produced a track or two for Madonna, right. for all I know. And he's just a great guy. Um, he came out on the road to get what me and the band are about. And uh, I said, you know, he said, what do you want to do? I said, well, Keith, I want to I want to push myself to, ba- to make the best record in country music next year. And he was like, he didn't shake, he, he didn't even flinch at that. He was like, well, we've got some, we got our work cut out for us. Yeah. And man, he pushed me and pushed me and pushed me. And I wrote probably 150 songs. And uh, I listened to a lot of songs from a lot of publishing companies. But, you know, the thing about it is, is that like, when I come to you with this next record, I, if I, I just can't sit here and look you in the face and try to sell you why you should play my song. If it's not something that I, that's me. That's a part of me. And other thing, I can't get up there on a stage and sell it to the crowd night after night after night. I mean, I've been singing some of these songs now for 14 years, but I can continue to sing them because they're just part of me. It's about my family or my faith in Jesus or things that are dear to me. And, um, you know, so we always listen for songs because what if somebody sends me that monster hit you know i don't want to be so narrow-minded but i think i wrote 13 of the 15 songs on this new record which is called the underdog um that'll come out sometime in the near future yeah you know my manager over there we're trying to figure all this stuff out but uh you know it's it's a great opportunity man it's just really you know there's not one night that i don't after show climb in that bus get in my bunk and i'm just like Thank you, Lord, for this bus, you know, because we traveled in a van for forever. Yeah. Like, I hate vans. <laughs> you ever, you, it's kind of like, I try to describe it like, you ever, did you ever eat something that made you so sick that you can never go back oh, to yeah. eat that? That's like me and vans. Like, I, they, if they pull up next to me, I'm like, whoa, get that thing, get that nasty thing away from me. <laughs> and I'll tell you the truth, from a college boy's perspective, it's tough for a dude to get a date when you're rolling around in a oh, big yeah. white van. Yeah. You got to have some serious game or you got to meet <laughs> that special girl that feels sorry for you. And I met her. Yeah. If, you know, she, first date, she was like, hey, why don't we just take my car? And I was like, that's a great idea. Yeah. You, you appreciate it. Yes. That. Thank you. So yeah. it was like, you know, but it's, it, it is an interesting, you know, we played a show last night um, in uh, Sheridan. Wyoming uh, with uh, Thomas Rhett and Big and Rich and there were a bunch of other bands on there and that's what me and Thomas were speaking about. He was like, man, is it true that you could play like, you know, 150 shows a year in Texas and make just an incredible living? Yeah. And I was like, yes, sir. And it's a great opportunity and you know, but we, the the fun thing about it is like on our way here, I was like, wow, Utah is so beautiful. You know, and I've never had the opportunity to come here. And, you know, music allows me that chance to see, to, to, to go new places and meet new faces. And right. man, that's a ton of fun. I mean, all it, it's music. I owe so much to, you know, the good Lord for giving me the opportunity to make music. Cause I, you know, the bus, I pull up to my house I'm like, wow, I never thought I'd have this wonderful house just by strumming. Just doing what you love. Guitar, you know, and doing what I love. So, you know, I'm very uh, thankful. Heck, you were mentioning opportunities. You had Willie Nelson say, yeah, Yeah. I'll sing with you. Yeah, how about that? I always tell people, hey, here's the deal I could quit tomorrow and go get a job in construction. And when the boys are bragging about things they've done, I can go, well, I sang with Willie. Yeah, can't beat that. And the story behind that is uh, Ray Benson from Asleep at the Wheel produced, helped me produce five or six of my records, and he was at. 